Whoops, we're showing the wrong hype video for this pay-per-view event. This is supposed to be the Elimination Chamber hype, not WrestleMania. Where superstars can solidify their legacy. Which doesn't end up happening most of the time these days. Six times the championship has changed hands. And with all these references to how many times a title has changed hands inside the Elimination Chamber, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say both world titles are gonna be retained. Even opening video packages can jinx the momentum of wrestlers. Damn, with all this hype to the Elimination Chamber, it's a shame that the main event is an ambulance match with no implications on WrestleMania itself. This fan, despite holding up a pretty awesome sign, looks bored out of his mind about the idea of being present for the Elimination Chamber. But the Elimination Chamber, to me, starts the road! Jerry Lawler completely disregards the Royal Rumble event being the start of the road to WrestleMania. That's sad. There we have Chris Jericho pretty much saying, Sorry I'm late, didn't realize I was making the first entrance of the night. Also, Chris's dark entrance with his jacket is a lot more cooler when the lights aren't giving away his position before he's in the right pose. Chris Jericho does have pyro for his entrance, so where the hell is it? Chris Jericho will enter this chamber matchup last. And that is a major sin. Just like whenever we know who's entering the Royal Rumble match at a certain number, it's a sin whenever we know who's exiting the Elimination Chamber pod last, even though it's supposed to be hyped as a random selection from spotlights. WrestleMania. Well, even if The Miz got the chance to win the WWE Championship and go on to WrestleMania, he wouldn't be in the main event whatsoever. Remember, this is WrestleMania 28, which has been set to headline with John Cena versus The Rock since the Raw after WrestleMania 27. The awesome one, The Miz! Fuck, I thought I had already covered every pay-per-view where Michael Cole shows off his creepy erection for The Miz. How wrong I was. This just proves that the pyrotechnicians were being dicks to Chris Jericho by refusing to fire his pyro but going through with everyone else's, assholes. Title WrestleMania. Who are you, The Undertaker? There is absolutely no denying that CM Punk's sense of humor is freaking awesome. No pun intended to The Miz. Title kissing. The door to the Elimination Chamber has been locked in place, but they forgot to get the WWE Championship out of there first. Pick here, I choose Chris Jericho. First of all, you commentators are supposed to be neutral, but most importantly, has your erection for The Miz finally started to die down? Please God, I hope so. Ah, yeah, you failed. The way CM Punk waited for Kofi Kingston to approach for the boom drop and then kicked him in the head to counter it was well done. Great strategies by the WWE Champion. I'm a hit pointer, right? CM Punk blows Chris Jericho a kiss, further securing their inevitable match at WrestleMania and making it obvious that either Chris or CM is winning this match. Returning from a, a five year hiatus. Shawn Michaels returned from a four year hiatus, not five. He retired in 1998, then came out of retirement in 2002. If it was five years, he would have either retired in 97 or returned in 03. Michael Cole sucks at math. Considering Chris Jericho is already scheduled to exit his pod last, what's the point of shining a spotlight over his pod? If it's a supposedly randomized pick, then keep his pod away from the lights. Also, no joke, it takes 15 seconds for the lights to pick a wrestler. What's he gonna do now? Oh, look being a show-off simply because your nickname is the show-off doesn't shield you from being sinned. The sin is mostly going to the fact that Dolph Ziggler is wasting time. Looks good. Oh. And look at that, he completely misses CM Punk in that leg drop attempt and hurts his hot ass instead. Because pitfall submissions must occur between the ropes. Even though many Elimination Chamber matches, most recently the previous years, can have pinfalls or submissions occur out on the metal floor. Jeez, here's another sin off. I cringed in pain after seeing CM Punk whack heads with Kofi Kingston in midair. As hardcore as it is to throw your opponent out of the ring to the chamber floor, when you have the chance to hit your finisher and eliminate your opponent, freaking do it, right? CM Punk mooning Chris Jericho. If I were Kofi Kingston, I would have waited to see if CM Punk would successfully eliminate Dolph Ziggler and then hit Trouble in Paradise. Why do wrestlers keep breaking up pinfalls in a match where a single pinfall doesn't guarantee your victory? Oh come on, it's one thing when there were two other wrestlers still in the pods, but once again, we already know Chris is entering last following his victory on Raw. So instead of the stupid spotlights, just open up the Miz's door immediately. Man, I feel bad for laughing at this. That's the 10th or 15th time that Dolph has been launched onto the metal floor since the moment he entered. Actually, Chris Jericho didn't go after anyone. All he did was exit his pod and enter the ring. It was CM Punk who released The Miz and went after Chris. Chris's I have one pose always annoys me because most of the time he doesn't win his matches after doing that. Oh, Ow, my hands! Even with a limited view of the action, I could still see Chris hit the chamber pod with his hands. I got excellent vision and senses here. Oh, 
of the eye legal in this match. We interrupt Elimination Chamber 2012 to bring you Elimination Chamber 2010. Hey, I suppose Chris figured since hiding from The Undertaker helped him win the World Heavyweight Championship before, perhaps hiding from CM Punk could help him win the WWE Championship tonight. So many no's from Michael Cole. Trying to pin an opponent to eliminate them is not stealing the victory, you stupid dumbass. Michael will never learn, will he? Kofi Kingston submits to the Lion Tamer, yet the referee is completely ignoring it. What is wrong with you, asshole? Post-elimination assault. Chris Jericho gets kicked out of the cage, hits a cameraman, and that is somehow enough to cause the referees to deem him unworthy to continue the match. Five cents added for that bullshit. Monologuing is a villain's greatest weakness, Miz, and what do you know, it causes him to lose his match, too. Total shocker there. Previously on WWE, Santino Morello's horrible remake of Rocky Balboa's training montage for the upcoming Elimination Chamber match. Seth Rollins, very interesting guy. Wonder if he will ever have a bright future after training in John Cena's gym. It's like always John Cena. Back in 2012, we would take one look at this guy and not once would it pop in our heads that he is about to headline four consecutive WrestleMania events. We should never overlook anyone in any future video packages. Beth Phoenix, the Glamazon! I thought it was the other way around. Beth Phoenix is her actual ring name, whereas the Glamazon is her nickname. Beth Phoenix can't possibly be stupid enough to think that Tamina Snuka is going to willingly exit the ring and get herself counted out in a Divas Championship match. That's racist. This always irritated me about wrestlers. They demand the referee to ask their opponent if they give up when the referee is already doing that. Just once, I'd like to hear a referee say, I am asking her, you idiot! That'd be hilarious. Time for the goddess to step up and claim what is hers. Foreshadowing Alexa Bliss. Wow, I'm actually amazed at that one. Quit your cheerleading, Jerry. I already went through a lot of Michael Cole's erection for The Miz earlier. I don't need this, too. We're seriously still doing this? And this is the longest period where anyone I know has been an interim general manager. Plus, I think the WWE completely gave up on searching for a new general manager during the reign of John Laurinaitis. Also, it takes another 15 minutes of pay-per-view time before we get to our next match. Talk about stalling out the ass, something we don't need during pay-per-view events. <laughs> what chance? The former WWE Champion! Alberto Del Rio has made a temporary return from his injury, and the only one excited about it is Michael Cole. Exactly how it should be. Hell, Alberto was once again out of the picture after this appearance. Teddy Long is un perro. Alberto Del Rio complains about the performance of Teddy Long as the general manager of SmackDown despite not being anywhere near Teddy in recent times. His complaints aren't exactly a good help for John. Oh, hi, Mark. Teddy Long is a bully. So we're just going to waste 15 minutes of precious pay-per-view time on wrestlers complaining about Teddy's performance as GM. Might as well just add in 15 cents. We've never seen eye to eye. That might be because you're on SmackDown, whereas John Laurinaitis runs Raw. Holy shit, I think I just found Sami Zayn's inspiration for dressing up like that and complaining about everything. This awkward exchange of getting together for a picture. What is the point of any of this? Seriously, what happened to the pay-per-view? Doesn't make any sense for the Elimination Chamber to not be in the main event of a pay-per-view literally titled Elimination Chamber. But hey, at least it means no more cringe training montages from Santino Morella. At one moment when the only reason the Great Khali is in this Elimination Chamber match is because Mark Henry was suspended for threatening Teddy Long. Not exactly the right time to be saying that Daniel Bryan has no chance in hell of winning this match. Did Booker T somehow miss the previous Elimination Chamber match where CM Punk started the match and retained his title? What an idiot. With all due respect, it is completely weird to see anybody wearing a coat that has sleeves and pretending it's some sort of cape by not putting your arms through the sleeves. Wade Bear should have replaced the coat with an actual cape or something. Sure, Daniel Bryan is safe inside the pod, however, it's still a bad idea to provoke the big show, especially when being locked in a pod is a temporary safe area. The continued bullshit of people saying Big Show was the World Heavyweight Champion for only 45 seconds. He had the title for a good three minutes before losing it to Daniel. The referee calls for the bell to ring and the timekeeper must be fast asleep or something. Wake up! Yeah, his colleague gonna be ready to go. I don't think so. Booker T has a point, which further makes me question why the great Kali of all wrestlers was the replacement of Mark Henry. Snooki was more successful at WrestleMania than the Big Show. And that's forever a sin. The fact that Snooki competed at WrestleMania in general is a fucking sin to the legendary event. He once tossed Randy Orton down a flight of stairs. In the subject of Wade Barrett being remorseless, I'm honestly surprised the Nexus wasn't mentioned at all since that was his main reason for being remorseless. 
The locked door is a lot weaker than many are letting on. It was almost torn off because of the Big Show's size. They should consider putting a second lock higher on the door to tighten the strength. Big Show lost to a boxer and a sumo wrestler. Must be thankful he didn't end up losing to a basketball player at WrestleMania the years later. The Big Show is starting to take control. Sure, let's just pretend Big Show wasn't in control of the match since the start of seven minutes ago, constantly kicking Wade's ass and now kicking Cody Rhodes' ass. But only now is he starting to take control. Show was already starting to fall before Wade could chop block his leg. Wade Barrett turning on Rhodes. Bullshit. Wade was never aligned with Cody in the first place, even when Cody helped him take down Show. So Wade didn't turn on anyone. <laughs> Jerry Lawler annoyingly humming the tune from Rocky Balboa. Come on, can we stop with the Rocky references already? Earlier on, the in the back. Who are you, Chris Jericho? Better hope Cody doesn't get accidentally kicked out of the cage by the eventual winner too. Yeah. Here's another reason why the pinfall should count outside the ring. Fuck! Oh. Santino Morello reacted to the great Kali's chop before Kali could even connect it. Don't know which was worse, Kali's chop or Santino's early reaction. Decide. About 55 seconds after waiting inside the pod. That's gotta suck. And it goes back to what I said before. If Kali was gonna be easily eliminated like that, then why is he in this match as Mark's replacement? It's crazy to think that everyone has been knocked out for the next four minutes, which allows Big Show to take a sweet ass time and break into Daniel Bryan's pod. Whoa. Honestly, if I were Daniel, I would have grabbed Show's arm and started hitting it against the glass and pulling on it to cause damage and prevent the knockout punch. Because if you realize it, Show is extremely vulnerable doing this. Oh. Easily breakable chain is easily breakable. Once Big Show successfully managed to get inside the pod, it was absolutely hilarious to see Daniel get his ass kicked while locked inside. Guess it paid off. I bet everyone else is pretending to be unconscious but laughing their asses off in the process like I am. Although, since Daniel is locked with no ways of defending himself, why doesn't Show knock him out right now? That way, when it's time to unlock Daniel's pod, Show can toss him in the ring, pin him, and be done with it. Simple as that. If Show can do this, then why didn't he just use one of the other wrestlers as a way of breaking into Daniel's pod? would save him the trouble of having to pull the chains off, and it would allow the rest of the competition to be vulnerable for elimination too. Wrestlers team up to get rid of the biggest threat in the match cliche, and this is not even the first or the second time that Big Show was teamed up for his elimination. Another post-elimination assault for the night. Ah, you slipped. Wade Barrett is addicted to Daniels Bryans, and how sad that it is a very familiar predicament Daniel seems to always find himself in. How the hell was Birdie Danielson even born after all the times Daniel hit his Bryans in wrestling matches? Commentator states how many fans are in attendance as if we give a shit about a cliche. More cliches coming in these videos. I ain't gonna lie, for a brief moment I actually thought Santino Morello would somehow win the World Heavyweight Championship. Even if Daniel was inevitably going to win, it's a good thing that we had a moment where the last person we'd expect to win had almost got the job done. This went from a label lock to a legitimate strangulation, and Daniel Bryan should be ashamed of himself for nearly murdering his last opponent. Here comes Sheamus, the guy who was literally on the hype poster for this event, but only made a tiny cameo appearance. You two can settle this tonight in the ring. You have got to be kidding me. We have an impromptu match on pay-per-view all because Jack Swagger threw a piece of cheese in Hornswoggle's face? What has happened to the WWE in 2012 where they had no idea what to do with their pay-per-view events? And it was B for the United States Championship. Defending Hornswoggle from being bullied automatically grants someone like Justin Gabriel a United States Championship match instead of earning it by showcasing his abilities in the ring. On his Twitter account. Nobody cares about the photos David Otunga tweeted, and we don't care about Twitter right now, even if it's likely more entertaining than what we are watching right now. Michael Cole has an office? Let me guess, another coal mine hidden somewhere? Oh, just what we freaking need after the last totally successful time he had one. Looking good right there. Can't take what are we even watching anymore? Because it sure as hell isn't the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view event. Did someone swipe my remote and change it to something boring? Yikes, while writing sins for this match, I completely forgot that Jack Swagger was defending the United States title in this match. See what happens when you put random matches that we don't care about? Three additional sins for three wasted minutes. Can someone explain why an ambulance match between Kane and John Cena is the main event of a pay-per-view called Elimination Chamber? 
Like I said earlier, this has no implications on WrestleMania, as John is already locked in for the main event against The Rock, and Kane is thrown out of the main event scene following this match. Also, in my opinion, this event should have had the World Heavyweight Title Elimination Chamber match be the main event, given how Sheamus declared as a WrestleMania opponent afterwards. That would have been the right way to end the show. How is Zack Ryder even relevant to this ambulance match anymore? None of this makes any sense. I highly doubt Order 66 would work on John Cena because he's not a Jedi whatsoever. Order 66 is the order to execute all the Jedi in existence, so the Stormtroopers would have absolutely no idea who to kill. Booker T is assuming that the winner of this ambulance match will be the official opponent for The Rock at WrestleMania, despite the last 10 months being hyped for John Cena to face him. Not once did Kane show any interest in facing Rock at Mania. Wait a minute, wasn't the ambulance already backed up into the arena? Why did it go forward again? Kane curled up like a kid who's hiding underneath a blanket during a thunderstorm. McDonald's talk during a wrestling match. Oh god, that punch from John was way off, not to mention Kane reacted to not getting hit at all. Oh boy, this might take a while. What is the point of doing the shoulder tackles into the five knuckle shuffle if it's not going to help John get any closer to defeating Kane and winning the ambulance match? He has to literally drag Kane's dead weight over to the ambulance. There are wheelchairs underneath the wrestling rings too? How could Kane possibly push John Cena off of the stage if there's literally no stage? It's level with the floor, so where is there a place for Kane to throw him off of? Kane was blocking the wheelchair well before John could even come close to hitting him with it. This match is really hard to watch, to be honest. And how was that supposed to be effective? The only thing Kane forgot to do was throw his arms up in the air while he enjoyed the ride like it was a roller coaster. Booker T believes Kane weighs 900 pounds. That's the equivalent of three Kanes, not one. Kane successfully places John inside the ambulance, but then takes a sweet ass time in closing the doors, which leads to John recovering and escaping in time. Typical. Right onto the soft mats below, and I'm done.